Welcome back to r slash neighbors from hell, where people share stories about their crazy neighbors and in case you are new around here, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel to join our awesome community. Without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. Threaten to call 911 on our houses construction? Get your yard sale ruined. Let me start off with a backstory, I come from a long line of firefighters and so when a few fire trucks from the fire company the men in my immediate used to volunteer at came up for sale, my grandfather bought them and fixed them up. However, my grandpa had a townhouse and only had just enough room to park them in his backyard, but not enough land to build a building to store them. When my dad bought his property with a few acres, it was decided that a barn would be built to store the fire trucks on my dad's property. This property did not have a house and used to be designated as farmland. Now we get into the story when my dad wanted to build a house in this little bit of woods right off a new neighborhood on land he bought, he had to get the government to rezone it to be residential. This is not that difficult, just holding a court session to make sure nobody has any legitimate objections to the procedure. However, for some reason, one more neighbor was just too much for a decent chunk of the existing neighborhood, so a bunch of them came up with every dumb reason as to why that land had to be left alone. The woman who we will feature prominently later in the story and we will call Mrs. B from now on suggested that the land would be much better suited for horses to frolic in. Nobody in the neighborhood knew of anybody in the town who owned horses and there was not enough land for horses to legally be allowed to live upon it. So after about two weeks of this and similar nonsense, the court began to rezone the land and finally construction of the house began. As soon as the trees were cut down, the fire trucks were moved onto the property where the barn would be built once the house was done. Once all the trees were down, my dad built up a burn pile to dispose of all the wood and before he did, as well as him being a firefighter himself, called the fire department to let them know what he was doing and they said it is alright because he was right in the window of land where no permit would be needed and a big bonfire also was not a problem. So he lit it up. Soon Mrs. B came strutting down the road, phone in hand, yelling at my dad that she's calling the fire department. He tells her he is with the fire department and in case she's blind, there is two fire trucks already on the property, just in case they were antiques but they would still get the job done and were ready to. She continues screaming so dad gets on the phone and calls the fire department once again, asking if anyone has called to complain about a fire at his property, to which they responded saying no fires had been reported that day at all yet, so dad hangs up and starts calling Mrs. B the liar that she is and to go back to her house and quit disturbing us. We had a few more interactions like this over the process of us moving in, but nothing deters us and so finally a barn is built for the trucks. Eventually things die down in regards to the neighbors and we make good friends with about half the neighborhood. Now a year or so after the barn is built, another local fire department my grandpa is involved with is working on selling one of their old trucks, a giant Ford Louisville model, basically a semi truck with a fire truck body. They don't have the space to store since its replacement has come in and until they find a buyer they need a place to store it, so my grandpa offers to store it in our barn. Part of this deal involves us running the truck around once a week because letting the truck sit too long could cause damage. Well, during this time Mrs. B starts having a ton of yard sales, we noticed a few people parking on our lawn during this, not like one tire on the grass or something, no, there are people using our yard like it's a parking lot. We always try to ask people to move because it is our lawn after all, but yet it keeps happening. One day we learn Mrs. B keeps telling people to park on our lawn, we figure a good solution to this is to put up a sign that has been spray painted to say no parking in big black letters, clearly legible so everyone knows. Our lawn stops being used as a parking lot for a bit. Until one day Mrs. B decided to march on over, rip the sign off its post, rip the post out of the ground, it was all temporary so it was just temporarily duct taped together and pushed into the ground a little and proceeded to throw into what's left of the woods behind our house. 
My parents were furious, people began parking in the lawn the way they used to again the next day. This is when my dad comes up with a genius plan. He puts the sign back up, but he's not done. It is just that time to take the fort around the neighborhood. My dad has been driving trucks like this since he had his license, so he knows just how to get it to do what he wants it to do. He takes it out, goes up to one end up the neighborhood, turns around and starts headed back. This truck had a 10 speed manual transmission and in this half mile long stretch of road he got the diesel motor into 8th, waited until just before he reached Mrs. B's house and by the time he had reached the edge of her property the truck was in 3rd. Now this truck was diesel powered and all that slowing down makes the truck roll some serious coal with the exhaust pointed straight at the yard sale on a relatively calm day. Needless to say, while nothing looked all that bad, maybe a little darker than before, the worst part was the smell. Diesel fuel stinks really bad when it has been coal rolled. Within a few days everything left from the yard sale was packed up into garbage bags and was sitting next to her trash can. She might have tried to call the cops, but would the cops even acknowledge her if she told them that her neighbor's fire truck drove by spewing black smoke all over her yard sale items ruining them? I don't think so. After this not only did she leave us alone, she stopped having yard sales altogether. So point being, since Mrs. B was horrible to us that whole time we have owned property in the neighborhood, we cost her hundreds if not thousands of dollars she could have made at that yard sale and any others she might have had in the future. And guys have you ever done any yard sales? I know people who really enjoy doing these, especially when going to flea markets. I remember when I was younger we always went to flea markets to buy Pokemon cards and if you ask me that was pretty much the only useful thing you could buy there. And the next one is titled, want to park your car in my yard and throw down trash? Enjoy your car's new makeover. So my neighbors across the street always park in my yard and they hang out in their car drinking, smoking weed and blasting rap music. They usually have the cops called on them about twice a month but usually for getting in fights in their front yard. Well about a month or so ago they kept me up till about 1am partying. Woke up again at 5am and they were still going. Well, I wake up at about 7 and it appears that they have gone inside, presumably, to finally sleep. So I thought, you keep me up with your music? Enjoy the song of my lawnmower. I start working my way to the edge of my yard where they parked their car and noticed a bunch of blunt wraps and those mini liquor bottles along with some food trash. I instantly became even more enraged until I noticed that their window was left down, so I do a pass by their car and shoot do cover shreds of trash on and in their car. And then I heard the blade make contact with one of the bottles, shattering it to pieces and launching the shards directly at the side of their car. By the end of it, my yard was clean and looked great, while the entire right side of their car looked like they parked next to a dumpster that exploded. I saw them a few hours later changing one of their tires, I guess part of that bottle hit its mark, oh well. And guys I'm curious, has anyone ever done something to your car, like slashing your tires? I remember when I was in elementary school, some idiot apparently enjoyed slashing the tires of the teachers at the school, but for some reason nobody ever found out who did that. Rumor had it that it was the student that had to stay down for a year, however that was never confirmed. And the next one is titled, try to intimidate my disabled neighbor, I will make sure you get dropped by your sponsors. So this ended about 4 months ago and still makes me happy whenever I think about it. This might be long, sorry. I've lived in this apartment complex about a year or so and it is pretty nice I suppose. My next door neighbor is an older lady who happens to be disabled. While I don't know the actual extent of her disabilities, I know she needs help from time to time and if I am around I try to help. She's really sweet and about once a week she will make me a plate of something homemade to eat since I work nights and really don't cook. Her pork chops and fried cabbage are fire. 
We both live upstairs and she uses a wheelchair but she can walk up and down the stairs slowly and if I am around I will carry her wheelchair down but her daughter usually does it. Her daughter picks her up every morning on her way to work and takes her to this community center every day so she can get out and socialize and such. This is where this guy comes in, I like to call him Young Douche. Young Douche YD is your typical piece of crap in that he is super obnoxious in everything. He drives a souped up Subaru that is really loud and plays his music so loud that I can hear the bass from upstairs. Also he likes to park in the one handicapped spot. Our apartment's management is super crappy and they don't get involved with anything and refuse to get involved with this. Now before he moved in my neighbor's daughter used to park in the handicapped spot to pick up her mom but since this dickhead started parking there she's had to park in front of his car so she can get her mom. I tried to be nice and left a note on his car but nothing really changed but it was no big deal at first. One morning I am asleep and get woken up to this guy just holding down his horn non-stop. My neighbor's daughter had parked in front of him and he could not get out. When I looked outside I could see him get out and start harassing both my neighbor and her daughter. I could hear him talking crap so I put some pants on and walked outside to see the dude all in the daughter's face. She is like 4 or 9 so he's looking down on her like he's gonna punch her. Then my neighbor tried to calm him down and she put a hand on his elbow and he slapped her hand away hard. I saw that and ran downstairs but as soon as I opened the gate and he saw me he backed off and got back in his car and then started honking his horn again. I waited there until they left then he left not before he flipped me off while driving away. So at that moment I knew I had to F with him. My other neighbor knows him and told me about the dude. Apparently he's big in the custom Subaru scene and he does shows and stuff with his car all the time. He has sponsors that sometimes give him parts and they use his car in their ads I guess. Anyway it took me a while to come up with some good revenge so I would do the simple stuff. I had expired milk in my fridge because I really don't drink milk often but I like cereal occasionally and just had some so I would start putting a little bit all over his car when I got home. After a while you can smell rancid milk all over it but that was not enough. I needed a real big F you so my other friend found out he had this big show coming up and the dude had a photographer come and take pictures of him with his car. The night before the show I go to AutoZone and get the worst decals and bumper stickers I can find and spend about an hour and a half putting these all around his vehicle. When I was done it looked horrible, I even did a swastika of Honda, Ford, Lamborghini and Fiat decals on his hood. While nothing I put would not permanently damage his vehicle it would take hours to take it all off. So about 6am when I guess he was going to the show I hear screaming. He is yelling so loud that some other neighbors go outside and see what's up. When they see it's him they laugh and go back inside. He then called 911 and they show up but it is not like there's anything they can do. Then the cop actually gives him a ticket for parking in the handicapped spot without tax and then they left. Apparently he had to make that show for his sponsors or else they were gonna drop him. Supposedly he was hard to work with and it was the straw that broke the camel's back. Now even after all that the dude still kept parking in the handicapped space. Eventually when I got home from work I would just start throwing trash on his hood. I once threw a chocolate shake at his windshield. Seeing this car in the handicapped space every night really pissed me off for some reason. Anyways he eventually moved out. Still hate that guy though. And guys please let us know in the comments what would you do if you saw some guy frequently parking in the handicapped spot on purpose even though he has no business parking there. Would you also throw some X or something at his windshield? Let us know your genius revenge in the comments. The next one is titled Woman tears down our fence for satellite TV and 10 years later the police chief is fired as a direct result. July of 2002 when I was 16 our neighbor who was a brat with a capital C decided she wanted to have satellite TV installed. The house she lived in had a very small yard in the back, smaller in front and the fence that my mother had installed a couple of years ago was only about 5 yards from her side door. 
The only place the satellite could be installed was on the back of the house, but there was no way the vehicles could make it to her backyard. So in her infinite wisdom, the brat decided to have them tear down our fence and drive over our property to get to her backyard. This starts a huge fight between her and my mother, the brat tries to claim that my mom built the fence too close to her house anyway and mom produced the land description to prove the fence was in the right spot. Turns out they were both wrong. We knew the woman had built her house too close to the property line, but it seems it was closer than we thought. She was only feet from the line, that fence should have been almost touching the side of her house. Her uncle was the deputy mayor of our small, 2000 population town and she tried to get him involved. Nothing came of it, so we thought it was over. Late September, early October, that same year while I was in school, my mom was taking a shower when our two dogs alerted her to someone at our door. She put on a bathrobe and went to see the police chief and about a dozen officers on our lawn claiming they had been tipped off to a meth lab on the property and demanded to be allowed to search. Mom realized that Brad had to have been the one to call them as the chief of police was known to be a personal friend to her family. Mom demanded a search warrant and they did not have one which triggered several hours of them refusing to leave until they searched the property. This all started around 9 or 10 in the morning, nearing 3 pm, mom tells them she needs to pick me up from school and take me to her mother's house because I could not drive yet. They refuse to move their vehicles to let her leave and say it's fine, they will send a squad car to pick me up, which would have just humiliated me, so mom calls her lawyer who informs her that if they don't produce a warrant to tell them to leave. So the chief tells her if he goes for a warrant, he will tell whoever issues them that he can smell meth on the property and will be given a warrant for anything he asks for. He will then return, kick our door out of the frame and if our dogs even look at him for that, he will shoot both of them in the head and kill them both. And yes, he actually said that to my mother. Mom called grandma to pick me up from school nearly an hour after I'd let out and let the police search the house. They find my mom's gun safe, the safe was one of those made of steel with a circular lock kind of like on a soda machine and had the key sitting on top of it. Before anyone says how unsafe it is, it was just my mom and stepdad in the house most of the time. I was an only child and lived with my grandparents and only visited on weekends and mom kept the door to her room locked with a key. There was no way anyone under 18 was getting near her guns. The cops proceed to take a crowbar and pry the safe open even though the key is right there and it is clearly the key to the safe. They then take the guns outside and divide them up. They even take my mom's handgun which she had a concealed carry permit for. This continued for hours until mom relented and opened my stepdad's shop building. He was using it to house his motorcycle while he slowly restored it from a wreck about 15 years before. They barely got over the threshold of the door before screaming meth lab pointing at the cleaning agents and bottles that were all scooted together. Nothing else, no other signs of meth other than some cleaning agents and empty mason jars sitting near one another. They brought out heavy spot lamps and more cops. By 1 in the morning my mother had been sitting outside in the cool, fall weather in nothing but a bathrobe this entire time. They claimed to have found a MJ plant behind our 6 foot tall privacy fence that we kept people from seeing us in our hot tub. When I found out about this I was upset, I was 16 and went to school in a small town, everyone would know about it. The next day, Saturday, I was piddling around on the internet when a friend messaged me to ask what had happened. And why was my mother in jail? My mother was not in jail. Friend, my mom said it's on the news right now. Mom and stepdad, last name, are sitting in jail this weekend without bond for running the largest drug den in your town's history. When mom called the news to ask them why they had ran that story without checking, they apologized and said they had been contacted by the town's police and were told to run the story. The next night they issued a public apology for it. 
I refused to go to school that Monday. It is very important to note that I had not been in school since Friday. On Tuesday when my grandpa dropped me off, the drug sniffing dog was at the school. However, as it was close to drug free week, I thought nothing of it. My business teacher told me she had seen the article in the local paper, but that it looked like it had been staged and if I caught any trouble for it, to let her know. I went to my locker as the officer walked out of the same hallway, but since that was the hall the principal's office was on, didn't think anything of it. I noticed a locker standing completely open and when I got to it I realized it was my locker. I blew up on the principal, I understand now that it is not my property and the school can authorize it being searched, but it was just bullcrap. Why was I being searched? Principal, no, you weren't searched. You must have left your locker open last night. Me, friend one and two have their lockers next to mine and they have basketball practice until four. They shut my locker if I leave it open. I have not been here since Friday. Are you telling me that everyone in this school left a locker standing open for all of Monday? I called my mom and was pulled out of school for Tuesday as well. Ultimately all the charges were thrown out because of that MJ plant. The chief of police put in his official report that it had been 8 feet tall and when questioned about it, when they tried to press drug charges on mom, he clearly said, Yes your honor, it was 8 feet tall. The judge asked him when he found it and he said about 1 in the morning. The judge then said if there really had been an MJ plant that was 8 feet tall behind a 6 foot tall fence, he would not have needed to demand permission to search the property. The charges were thrown out. And that is where it stood for 10 years. My mom waited and played the long game because she wanted to make fully sure the statute of limitations ran out. She did not want to give him any legal reason to retaliate against her, she waited and waited. Then on the first town council meeting, after the statute ran out, she made contact with one of the council members. In a small town you don't F with the council members. Everyone knows them and everyone listens to them, or they do here at least. This was the head of the council too and at the time his grandson was my co-worker, so he knew of me and he liked me well enough since I worked for the largest business in our area. He listened to mom's story and told her that the last he had heard there was nothing in the evidence locker at the station at the moment, meaning none of the guns they had confiscated had been entered. When she told him most of them belonged to me and were basically family heirlooms they were, he nodded and asked her that if he could produce those guns, could she prove they belonged to us. Mom said she had a notebook of descriptions of the guns, their serial numbers, serial numbers on the hunting rifles that had scopes and that two of them had distinguishing marks that were hidden from sight but she could find them and show them off. Because my mom loves having a paper trail on everything. He told her she would get them back that Monday. We found out that he went to the station and told the same police chief that because they had never successfully charged us with any crime and that now the statute of limitations had run out, all the confiscated property had to be turned back over to us but there was a rumor that the guns were not in evidence. He would be in on Monday to have it checked. The police chief went pale and on Monday they were all in the evidence locker. However, one of them was missing a scope. It came out somehow that the chief of police had never intended to enter them into evidence and had sold them to his friends. He had been thinking he got away with it for a decade until mom turned back up with proof that they belonged to her and legally had to now be returned. He had to go and buy back every one of them, sometimes paying more than twice what he had been paid because some of these friends had not been speaking to him for some time and one of them had taken the scope off a while back. He was immediately fired and arrested for it. We got our guns back. And guys I'm curious, did you ever have any similar shady encounters with police officers, especially in small towns? Let us know in the comments. And the next one is titled, Karen threatens to get me arrested for gardening my garden. Because the groundhog had no shadow, spring came early, so I had decided to weed the garden strip that borders mine and Karen's property, there is a fence between the garden and her house. While doing so, I get rid of some of my day lilies that are on my property. I finish, return to my house and continue my day. Until I hear a shriek from the side of my house. 
I rush over because I am scared someone got hurt and Karen, who just got home from work, asks me why I got rid of her lilies. I say that they were my lilies and that I was making space for tomatoes, cucumbers and carrots. She then calls the police because I had destroyed her property. The police come and basically tell her to go inside and shut up because it is pretty clear whose flowers they were. And the next one is an update to the garden story. It is titled Karen gets drunk and lights my neighbor's house on fire because I garden my own garden. This is an update to a previous post of mine, but I feel like this is big enough to warrant its own post. In my previous post I explained that a woman flipped out over the fact that I had taken daylilies out of my garden in preparation for some vegetables and such I was going to plant. In the comments some had suggested that I put a camera facing the garden in case Karen decides that the tomatoes look like they are on her side of the property line. My aunt who's not entitled was switching from Arlo to ring home security so she sent me those. They arrived the morning of the fire so no video. That aside, I did not expect Karen to do this. Yesterday, Karen got mega drunk, like multiple cases of beer drunk. I don't know what she was drinking, but she had obviously had a lot and this put her anger over the edge about the loss of my lilies. She went with wood and fire starter to my neighbor's house, the one on the opposite side of her house than mine, and lit their bins on fire. This fire spread to their porch and their entire home was alight. I am a light sleeper and living in a cul-de-sac was woken up by the orange haze floating through my windows. I called 911, the whole shebang, witness report and everything and as I went out with the 911 operator on the phone, this shitbag gives a confession. After a while and as the fire department shows up, she realizes her mistake. 1. She lit the house on fire and 2. She lit the wrong house on fire. She's being charged with arson and the like and everyone got out. There is a mother, father and two kids who are high schoolers. It still feels surreal. And guys, unfortunately, we have already reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories and if you haven't already, please also go to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube where I upload exclusive Reddit videos starting at just $3 a month. This is a great way to support me in case you are interested and the chance for me to become independent from YouTube revenue. Thank you so much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I hope to see you again tomorrow.